Hey, Kidopolis, what's up? I hope you had a fun-filled summer with family and friends. This month, we're talking all about help. And when I think of help, I think of, where's my cell phone? I have to call 911. Oh my goodness, are you bleeding? Where's my first aid kit? Are you drowning? Where's my floaty? Ugh. You know what? God helps us in so many different ways. He probably is not throwing floaties at us or a first aid kit, but he's always there to help us. And this month, we're gonna be talking about a guy named Moses who got a lot of help from God. So get up and find a place to give him all the praise.
Great job worshiping. Time for a game. And we're gonna test a little bit more about what we know about safety. I have these images in my hand and I'm gonna hold them up and you're gonna have to guess what they are. Are you ready? Okay, some of them could be like road safety. Some of them could be label safety. So pay attention, here we go. Ooh, what's this safety symbol mean? It's a crosswalk, you're right. We usually have these around schools, right? To keep us safe. What about this one? Do you ever see this on the road? What do you think it means? It's like there's a windy road coming up. Makes sense. This one. Danger, danger. What is this one? Yes, poisonous. Be careful when that symbol is on things. Ooh, this one might be a little hard for you. It's a triangle. <laughs> but what is it? What's, what emergency symbol is this? Or actually it's a road, it's on the road. It means yield. It means kind of like slow down, there could be something up, coming up ahead. Question mark. What do you think this one means? This one was hard for, even for me. I wonder if you know the answer. It's caution. Be cautious, be careful. Oh. What about this one? Hmm. Do you know? Do not enter. What about this one? This one's important. Right. It's not no smoking. And our last one, it's pretty easy, but it's an important one to follow on the road or when somebody's holding up at a crosswalk, stop. There's a reason why we have all these safety precautions, isn't there? So we can be safe. Rules are there to keep us safe. Let's remember that. Today, we're gonna hear about a group of people called the Israelites, who the Egyptians kept as slaves. They treated them really badly and they didn't deserve it at all. Today, we're gonna learn about how God helped them. Make sure you check out the Bible story just below here before you look at your episode on Grow TV. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, hey, it's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. We got a lot to talk about. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to TV. Hi, y'all. I gotta be honest. I'm not super prepared this week. I've got a lot on my mind. I tell you what, I read some of Moses' stories this week, and there's some crazy stuff happening in there. I mean, Moses said yes to God's plan for him. Then he went to Egypt and was like, hey, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, huh, no way. Moses is like, what? And things totally changed after that. Things changed so much, it got me scared. That's why I'm prepping. Because I read about the nine plagues that went over Egypt, and to call me Frank, even though I'm Carl, I got scared. So I have over here some items that are gonna help me prep for any possible plagues God might send my way. This is a Yeti mask. Know what Yetis are good at? Finding beef jerky. Why? I don't know, they were made for it. So if I'm ever hungry, I put this on, I'll probably find some beef jerky. This is an air pump. You get a flat tire on your bike? No worries, I got air. This is a Batman mask. It just looks cool, so I'm keeping it. And this, is a frisbee that looks like poop. It makes me laugh. And if you throw it at people, it'll go, ah. So, frisbee poop. And that's it for now. I mean, I have more, but I think this stuff, it'll keep me out of trouble for now. Carl. Hey, DJ, what's up, man? 
Not much, bro. How you doing? Well, if I'm being honest, I guess I'm a little paranoid. I've been prepping. Oh, oh, you prepping? What you prepping for, Carl? The possible plagues. Possible plagues? Carl, you lost me, man. What, what you talking about? Well, I read an exodus about the plagues, and it got me worried. What if something like that happened to us? So I got all my gear ready, just in case. I guess I can see where you're coming from. What about the story has you so worked up? Let's start there. Well, let's look at it. Pharaoh was refusing to let the Israelites go, even though Moses told him that God sent them, and even though Moses turned his staff into a snake. Pharaoh still didn't listen to Moses. Exactly. And then the plague started. So the first plague was the river that turned into blood. That's gross. If I were Pharaoh, I would have let the Israelites go right there. Ugh. I'm with you, man. Because right after that came the frogs. Imagine frogs in your street, in your house, and in your bed. Mm -mm. I know, it's terrible. After that came the plague of lice, then the plague of flies. <laughs> Yuck. Then the next plague was a plague that made all the livestock sick. Poor animals. Yep, and then the next one was, I don't like this one, the plague of boils. I don't even know what that is, but it scares me. Boils are like skin infections that cover your whole body and are extremely painful. Ouch! That had to have hurt! Wanna talk about hurt? How about the next plague? Hail. Balls of ice falling from the sky. Mm-mm. Then locusts. Bugs flying everywhere. And finally, the last one? Darkness. A life covered by darkness. Listen, I'm still afraid of the dark. That's why I'm gonna keep a flashlight on at all times. Oh, wait, Carl. That's not all. What do you mean? Oh, there's more. I mean, there's the final plague, darkness. What's more terrifying than that? Talk about troubling. Carl, that's not the last plague. That's the ninth plague. There's ten. Ten? Are you kidding me? I finally started to calm down, and now you drop this on me? Oh, no. This is going to be awful. What am I going to do? Well, let's talk about the last plague. It's called the plague of the firstborn. Excuse me? But this plague... The Israelites have a chance to save their firstborns. The what? TJ, I'm a firstborn. Yeah, me too. So this was Pharaoh's last chance. But God told Moses a way that the Israelites could be spared from the last plague. The people would need to take the blood of a lamb and paint their doorpost with it. Then when the plague came across the land, it would pass over their homes and they would be saved. So the Israelites were saved? Yes. After that, Pharaoh let the Israelites go. And after that, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and away from their horrible lives they knew as slaves. Well, then what happened? Nothing. God had saved them from Egypt and from the 10 plagues. Well, there was that moment when Pharaoh got mad and got all his soldiers and then he chased them when he was in his chariots and horses. I knew it. More bad things happened. But God saved them from that too. God actually had them walk right through a sea to escape Pharaoh's army. Whoa, that's great to know that God helps when we're in trouble. You're absolutely right, Carl. And I have good news. That's our big idea. Duh. So today's big idea is God helps us when we're in trouble. On the count of three, let's say it out loud. One, two, three. God, God helps, helps us, us when, when we're, in, we're trouble. in trouble. God sure does. Helps us when we're in trouble. Woohoo! Good job, everyone. I'm glad we got that all figured out, man. And you know what? Next week, I'm excited to talk about what happened to the Israelites after they left Egypt. Well, that's great. I can't wait to learn. So I guess I don't need this stuff now, right? Uh, well, well, you might need it for that thing. That that's something behind you, Carl. Something behind you, man. What? <laughs> got <Gotcha>. you. <laughs> All right, kids, we'll see y'all next week. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. God helped the Israelites when they were in trouble. God helps us, too, when we're in trouble. What are some ways that God actually helps us? When we're hurting, when we feel alone, or lost, God is always with us to help us, especially when we're in trouble. So let's remember that this week. God helps us when we're in trouble. Let's pray. 
God, we're so grateful for your son, Jesus, God, and for all your special stories in the Bible, God, especially this one today, God, that teaches us that you'll never leave us, God, that you're going to help us when we're in trouble and when we're weak or hurting, God, that you're always there for us, no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for watching with me today, guys. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Parents, the discussion questions are coming up next. And kids, there's a bunch of activities in the description below. Make sure you check them out. And we'll see you next week. Bye.